Do you know friends that according to the lending statistics, the demand for AI and ML specialists is projected to surge by 40% between 2023 to 2027. And on an average, an ML engineer is expected to earn around $133 and $336 per year. So if you are an aspiring ML engineer and thinking about what innovative projects you can show in your portfolio, then your wait is over. Cause in this video, I'll be covering eight amazing ML projects that you can showcase in your resume. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. But before we move on, just a quick info, guys. Simply Learn has got AI and Machine Learning Bootcamp in collaboration with the Caltech University. You can gain skills in ML, Deep Learning, Reinforcement Learning, NLP, Generative AI, Prompt Engineering, ChatGPT, and many more. So hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. So let's get started. So guys, let's start first with a beginner level project. And the first project that we are going to encounter that is home value prediction. So guys, this project aims to develop a predictive model to estimate the value of residential properties. The model will analyze various features such as location, square, footage, number of bedrooms and bathrooms, age of the property and other relevant factors. By leveraging historical property data, the model will be able to provide accurate home value predictions, which can be useful for real estate agents, buyers and sellers. So guys, the programming language that we are going to use all over here will be Python and machine learning libraries that we will be using will be scikit-learn, TensorFlow, Keras and for data handling libraries we have Pandas, NumPy and for visualization we have to use Matplotlib and Seaborn. Now what will be the approach for this one guys? So guys, the first one that we have a data collection. So here, what is going to happen guys? So first you have to collect the historical property data from the sources like Zillow, Retailer.com. You can also get database from the public real estate databases like Kaggle datasets where you have Zillow home value prediction. Ensure that the dataset include features like location where you have latitude, longitude, square footage, number of rooms, year build, property type and previous sales. The next step that comes is data cleaning. You have to handle the missing values by using imputation techniques or removing incomplete records. Removing outliers that may skew the model's prediction. Normalize or standardize the data to ensure consistency. The third one that we have is feature engineering. You have to create new features such as proximity to schools, crime rates, and access to the public transportation. Encode categorical variables, example property type, location using techniques like one-hot encoding. Generate interaction features that capture relationship between existing features. The fourth one that we have is model selection. Use regression models like linear regression, random forest, gradient boosting, neural networks. Experiment with different models to identify the best performing one. Now, in the next phase, all you have to do guys is model training and evaluation. Split the data set into training and test sets. Train the model on the training set and evaluate their performance on the testing set using metrics like RSME, which means root mean squared error. You can use cross-validation to ensure the model's robustness and avoid overfitting. The sixth one that we have all over here is hyperparameter tuning. You can optimize the model's hyperparameter using techniques such as grid search or random search to improve accuracy. And if you're looking forward to deploy your model, then you can develop a web interface using Flask or Django to allow users to input property features and get predictions. You can deploy the model on the cloud platform like AWS for scalability. Now, if we talk about the complexity level of this, we all know that it is a beginner level project. Now let us move on to the one more set that is music genre classification and generation. So guys, this is also one of the most beginner level project. This project aims to develop a system that can classify music tracks into different genres and generate new music composition within specified genre. The goal is to build a model that analyzes audio features to categorize music and uses deep learning techniques to create new music. This project introduces advanced concept of audio processing, deep learning and generative models. So guys, what will be used in this? So we'll have programming language that will be Python. For audio processing, we'll be using Librosa. 
For machine learning libraries, we will be using TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch. For data handling libraries, we will be using Pandas, NumPy. For visualization, we will be using Matplotlib, Seaborn. For a dataset, guys, you can use GDZAN Music Genre Dataset, or you can get it from Free Music Archive. So, guys, in the first phase, we are going to have data collection. You can update datasets containing music tracks and their corresponding genre from the sources, from GTZAN Music Genre Dataset, and the Free Music Archive. Ensure that a dataset includes diverse genre and substantial number of tracks per genre. Next, we'll go for data pre-processing. Use library Librosa to load and pre-process audio files, including feature extraction such as mill frequency, sepstral coefficients, chroma features, and spectral contrast. You can normalize the extracted features to ensure consistent input for the given models. Now, if we talk about feature engineering guys, you can extract additional features from the audio files such as tempo, beat, zero crossing rate, etc. Create a feature matrix that represents the extracted audio features. Then go for the model selection. Use convolutional neural network or recurrent neural networks for the music genre classification. Split the dataset into training and testing dataset. Now, if we talk about model training and evaluation, guys, then you can train the selected classification model on the training set. Evaluate the model's performance on the testing set using metrics like accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. Use confusion matrices to understand the classification performance across different genres. Now, if we talk about model selection and training for the music generation, what you will do guys, you can use the generative adversarial networks or recurrent neural networks such as LSTM, long short term memory for music generation. Train the generative model on the data set to create new music sequences. Next we have model training and evaluation. You can train the generative model on sequences of audio features. You can evaluate the generated music by listening tests and by objective metrics like inception score or Frisch audio distance. If I talk about hyperparameter tuning guides, you can optimize the model. You can use the hyperparameters using techniques like grid search or random search to improve performance. If I talk about deployment guys, you can deploy these models on cloud platforms like AWS. Now let us move on to our next project. So guys, the complexity of this project is at the beginner level. Now let us move to the intermediate level projects. Next project that we have all over here is sentiment analysis of Twitter data. This project aims to develop a sentiment analysis model that can classify to each side positive, negative, or neutral. The goal is to analyze public sentiment on various topics or events using natural language techniques. So guys, what will be used all over here? So in this, we will have programming language like Python, okay, NLP libraries, NLTK Spacey. For machine learning libraries, you can use scikit-learn, TensorFlow, Keras. For data handling libraries, we have Pandas, NumPy. For visualization, we have Matplotlib, Seaborn, and we can use the API Twitter for data collection. Now, how you're going to work on it, guys? So guys, if I talk about the data collection, use a Twitter API to collect tweets based on specific hashtags like keywords or topics. Extract relevant fields like tweet text, user information, timestamp, etc. Then if I talk about data pre-processing, guys, clean the tweet text by removing special characters, links, mentions, hashtags, and stop words. Tokenize the text and perform lemmization or stemming to reduce the words to their base form. Next, if we talk about feature engineering, guys, we convert the clean text data into numerical representation using TFIDF, bag of words, or word embedding. Now, if I talk about model selection, guys, you can choose a classification algorithm such as logistic regression, NAEP bias, or LSTM. Split the data set into training and testing data set. Now, if I talk about model training and evaluation, then you can train the selected model on the training set. Evaluate the model's performance on the testing set using metrics like accuracy, precision, recall, and FN score. Use cross-validation to ensure the model's robustness. If I talk about hyperparameter tuning, guys, you can optimize the model's hyperparameters using grid search or random search to improve the performance. For deployment, which can be optional, you can deploy your model on AWS for real-time sentiment analysis. So if I talk about the complexity level, guys, its complexity is intermediate. So guys, our next project is customer segmentation using K-means clustering. This project aims to segment customers into distinct groups based on their purchasing behavior and demographic information. The objective is to understand customer segments and tailor marketing strategies accordingly. So guys, what programming languages will be using? So basically, we'll be using Python. For machine learning libraries, we will have scikit-learn. For data handling libraries, we'll have pandas, numpy. For visualization libraries, we'll have matplotlib, seaborn. And the dataset source will be e-commerce transaction data. 
how we are going to work on this one. For data collection, we can obtain a data set of e-commerce transactions that include customer demographics, purchase history, and product information. Next, we'll have data pre-processing. For data pre-processing, we are going to do the cleaning of the data by handling the missing values and outliers. Then for feature engineering, we are going to create features like total purchase amount, purchase frequency, and recency of the purchases. Then we are going to proceed for the model selection. We can use k-means clustering to segment the customers into distinct groups. We can determine the optimal number of clusters using methods like elbow methods or sillhout score. Now, if I talk about model training and evaluation, you can train the k-means model on the process data set. You can evaluate the quality of clusters by analyzing intra-cluster and inter-cluster distances. Next, we have the evaluation. You can visualize the clusters using techniques like PCA, principal component analysis, TSNE, etc. Next, we have the hyperparameter tuning. Now, now you can tune this model and interpret the characteristic of each segment. You can develop a target marketing strategies for each segment based on unique behavior and preferences. Now, deployment is optional. You can develop a dashboard using Flask or Django to visualize customer segments and track marketing campaigns. So guys, if I talk about the complexity of this project, so this is an intermediate level project. So guys, for dataset, you can use the Kaggle's customer segmentation dataset, which is available at the Kaggle's platform. Now, the third intermediate level project that we have all over here is building a chatbot with Rasa. This project aims to build an intelligent chatbot using Rasa framework. The chatbot will be capable of understanding user queries and providing appropriate responses, making it useful for customer support, personal assistance, or information retrieval. What languages we are going to use? So it will be Python based. We will have the NLP libraries like Rasa, NLTK, Spacey. For machine learning libraries, we are going to have scikit-learn, TensorFlow, Keras, etc. For data handling libraries, we are going to use Pandas, NumPy. So guys, this was what we are going to do it. And how you can work on this one? By collecting the data, collect the conversation data and FAQs from the target domain. Annotate the data to create training examples for the chatbot. Next comes is data pre-processing. Clean the text data by removing special characters and normalizing the text. You can tokenize and limitize the text to prepare for a training. The third one, we have the models training. You can use Rasa's NLU's component to train a model for intent recognition and entity extraction. You can define the dialogue management policies to handle different conversation flows. Next, guys, you can perform the feature engineering and integration. You can integrate the Rasa's NLU and core components to build complete chatbot. You can connect the chatbot to messaging platform like Facebook, Messenger, etc. For model selection and testing, what you can do guys, you can test this chatbot with various inputs to ensure that it handles the scenarios appropriately. And you can also select the right model using this. Now, if I talk about model training guys, what do you have to do? You have to collect the user feedback and conversational logs to continuously work on training the model. Next, similarly, you have to retrain the model periodically with the new data to see how it is working. So that will be your evaluation. Now, for the hyperparameter tuning, what are you going to do guys? You have to check in those scenarios where it is able to tune up with those scenarios where it can handle the input appropriately. And next is deployment. So guys, for deploying it, you can use AWS. So guys, for a data set, you can use Rasa's open source. So that's a very good data set for you to proceed. So guys, if you talk about difficulty of this project, this is an intermediate level project. Now let us move on to the advanced level projects. For advanced level projects, the first one that comes up to my mind is movie similarity from plot summaries. Now, this project aims to develop a system that can find out recommended movies similar to a given movie based on their plot summaries. By analyzing the textual content of the movie, plot summaries, the model will identify similarities and suggest movies with similar themes, storylines or genres. This project introduces beginners to natural language processing, text similarly measures and recommendation systems. What languages we are going to use guys, we'll be using Python, NLP libraries like NLTK, Spacey, machine learning libraries like Scikit-learn, data handling libraries like Pandas, NumPy, visualization, we can use NumPy, and data set source will be IMDB or Kaggle. So guys, this process is also involving the data collection, then you have to go for data cleaning, then feature engineering, next model selection. So similar process as I have discussed in other projects, so you have to also go through the same one. Next, what do you have to do guys? Similarly, what do you have to do? You have to train the model, 
then evaluate the model, then hypertune it, and finally proceed for the deployment. So this is overall process of this project. Try to research on the website a lot, like how you can extract it. So guys, you can use Kaggle or Towards Data Science to research more about this project. Now guys, if I talk about the difficulty of this project, and this is an advanced level project. Now, let us move on to the next one that we have all over here. That is image segmentation project for brain tumor prognosis. This is a very, very amazing project and definitely you can put up on your portfolio. Basically guys, this project aims to develop an image segmentation model to identify and delineate brain tumors from MRI scans. The goal is to accurately segment the tumor regions which can aid in prognosis, treatment planning, surgical interventions. This project introduces intermediate level concepts of computer vision, deep learning and medical image analysis. So guys, what we'll be using all over here? For programming languages, we can use Python. For deep learning libraries, we can use TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch. For image processing libraries, we can use OpenCV, Scikit-Image. For data handling libraries, we can use Pandas, NumPy. For visualization, we can use Matplotlib, Seaborn. Now, if I talk about what is the process of developing this project, the first step will be the same, data collection. So next step, you have to go for data pre-processing. Third step, you have to do the model selection where you can use CNN models for image segmentation task. Then you go for model selection. Moving ahead, you're going to have the model training and evaluation. You have to split the data set into training and validation and testing data sets. Next, proceed for the evaluation phase. Okay, evaluate the model with certain metrics. So here I can give you certain idea like you can use dice coefficient, intersection over union or accuracy. Then go for hyperparameter tuning, where you have to optimize the model's hyperparameters. You can use grid search or random search, as we have discussed. And finally, you can deploy this model on AWS. Now, guys, we have come to the final project. This is also a very amazing project, guys. So, guys, the complexity level of this project is advanced level. Now, let us move on to our final project. That is the impact of climate change on birds. This is a very, very amazing project and definitely you can add it on your resume. This project aims to analyze the impact of climate change on the bird population and migration patterns. By examining various climatic factors and their correlation with bird species data, the project seeks to predict how climate change might affect bird behavior and distribution. This project will introduce you some advanced level concepts like time series analysis, environmental data modeling, etc. So guys, what programming languages we'll be using? For data analysis, you can see we'll have Pandas, NumPy. For machine learning libraries, we are going to have Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow. For visualization, we are going to have Matplotlib, Plotly. For Geospatial, we are going to have GeoPandas, Folium. For data source, we're going to have public data sets on bird observation and climate data sources from eBird. Now, what will the process flow for this one, guys? First, you have to proceed for data collection. Gather bird observation from the data like eBird, which provides extensive record of bird sightings. Okay, and for climate data, you can collect it from NOAA, including temperature, precipitation, and other relevant climatic factors over the time. And similar next process will be the data pre-processing. Then you have to proceed for feature engineering. Then you have to go for model selection. Okay, moving ahead, you have to go for model training, then evaluation, then hyperparameter tuning, and finally you have to deploy the model. So research about this project, see what models you're going to use. Suppose I can give you a hint about this. You can use time series analysis models like ARIMA or ML models. You can also use random forest or gradient boosting for predicting impact on the bird population. So guys, use Google exhaustively to research about this project. This is also a very amazing project and it's gonna give you a lot of idea. Now, if I talk about the complexity level of this, it is an advanced level project. So guys, that was all for today's video. I hope so. You would have enjoyed our today's video on top ML projects at Simply Learn. Subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.